I want to thank the CEOs for quickly working with the subcommittee to appear today. The memorial service for John Lewis on Monday required our attention. However, this hearing is vital to our oversight work, and I appreciate your flexibility. Throughout my long time in Congress, I have prioritized oversight as one of our seminal responsibilities. Part of that responsibility is to periodically review the effectiveness of our laws. And I think it's a good and timely thing that we are now turning our attention to technological innovations, which brings us to all of your companies. Our country stricken by a pandemic becomes a dramatic illustration of the extraordinary reliance Americans have on technological innovations. In these unexpected and unprecedented times, your companies have provided innovations so our nations can meet a myriad of our daily needs. The delivery of groceries, virtual visits with doctors, connecting socially distant families, or keeping our small and large businesses connected. With that responsibility comes an increased scrutiny of your dominance in the marketplace. I want to reiterate something I've said throughout this investigation. Being big is not inherently bad. Quite the opposite. In America, you should be rewarded for success. We are here to better understand the role your companies have in the digital marketplace, and importantly, the effect they have on consumers and the public at large. You lead some of today's more powerful companies, and my colleagues and I have a great interest about what your companies do with that accumulated power. We also know that the tech marketplace is driven by data. So it follows that those who control the data, in essence, control the marketplace. There are broader questions surrounding data. However, who owns the data? What responsibilities do companies have to share it with their customers or their competitors? What is the fair market value of that data? Is there anything monopolistic in inquiring this data? And what about monetizing it? These are complex issues that Congress, regulators, and even your own companies are wrestling with in the current technological landscape, and the answers to which we owe the American consumers. Since the tech investigation began, we have heard rumblings from many who are quick to say your successful companies have grown too large. Since this hearing was announced, it seems that those complaints have gotten even louder. While I find these complaints informative, I don't plan on it litigating each of these complaints today. Antitrust law and the consumer welfare standard have served this country well for over a century. Those laws have provided the framework and creativity to make way for some of our most successful and innovative companies. I will be the first to highlight that. However, as the business landscape involves, we must ensure that our existing antitrust laws are applied to meet the needs of our country and its consumers. I share the concern that market dominance in the digital space is ripe for abuse, particularly when it comes to free speech. As we know, companies like Facebook, Google's YouTube, and Twitter have become the public square of today where political debate unfolds in real time. But reports that dissenting views, often conservative views, are targeted or censored is seriously troubling. Conservatives are consumers too, and they need the protection of the antitrust laws. The power to influence debate carries with it remarkable responsibilities. So let the facts be our guide here. Your companies are large, that's not a problem. Your companies are successful, that's not a problem either. But I want to leave here today with a more complete picture of how your individual companies use your size, success, and power, and what it means to the American consumer. And I yield back the